Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for joining this lesson. We shall be discussing mathematics paper one, section two. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share so that you may invite a friend to this wonderful lesson. So we'll be looking at what we call the, the KCC Premier Joint Examination 2025, section two of this paper. So let's look at the section two of this. Please remember to subscribe. It's a very good paper. And by the end of the lesson, you guys will be well prepared and equipped for the KCSE 2025. <clears throat> Three partners, Peter, Kyoko, and Emmanuel, contributed a total of 480,000 Kenya shillings in the ratio 4 is to 5 is to 7 to buy 8 hectares of land. The partners set aside a third of the land for social amenities and subdivided the rest into 15 meters by 25 meters plots. Part A, Roman 1, we are told to find the amount of money contributed by Peter. Just look at that. The amount of money contributed by Peter. This is a very interesting question on ratios, proportions, and rates of work. So let's interpret step by step. Looking at the proportions, looking at the proportions, ladies and gentlemen, we can see that the first ratio is what gives us the proportions by Peter. Yeah, let me check the paper. So that's well. Mm -hmm. Will tell me from your side whether you are able to see the paper. Tell me from your side whether the paper is well displayed. Let me see from the comment section whether you can see things right. Okay. Now, the three partners are here. They are contributing in the given ratios respectively. Meaning that the first proportion here, which is four, is the one by Peter. Therefore, Peter's contribution should be four proportions out of the total proportions now. Four is to five is to seven. So when we add up everything, we get 16. But now we multiply by 480,000. Now this means Peter contributed 120,000 Kenya shillings. Very simple and easy to understand. Look at the Roman two of the same. Now the number of plots that were obtained. Remember these partners are making a decision here to set aside a third of the land, a third of the land. So a third of eight hectares has been set for social amenities. Then now the two thirds that remains is what now shall be subdivided into plots. Therefore, let's talk about the amount of land that is going to be into plots. Two thirds of Mm -hmm. So the amount of land that will be subdivided into plots is five and a third hectares of land. Then now we will be able to say that uh, this land now should be converted into meters cubed, to meters squared, sorry. We know that one 
hectare of land is usually equal to a thousand, no, 10,000 cubic square meters. What about when the area is five and a third hectares of land? This shall be equal to five, three, three, and a third meters squared. Then now we'll be able to ask ourselves now, if this is the area of the land which is being subdivided, what about when we divide it with the size of a plot? So for us to get the number of plots, we're supposed to talk about area of the whole land that's being subdivided in square meters out of the area of a plot. Plots are measuring 15 by 25. So we have the measurement of the rectangular plots already identified. Measurement of the rectangular plot is already known. So we can find area. Meaning that with area of the plot and the area of the land being subdivided, we can get the number of plots that shall be obtained. We get 142.2. But now that it's a number of plots, we stick to 142. The complete plots, which will be identified. The extra, even if it's not exactly 142, the extra material of land, that is now what shall be used maybe for the surveyors as part of the path. You know, the roads, um, just in between the plots, you know, some material will go to the wastage, like roads and such other things. Percent of the profit realized to pay administrative costs. They share the rest of the profit in the ratio of their contribution at 80,000. Each at 80,000. Thank you, thank you for following. Thank you, thank you for following. I can check your comments. Remember to comment. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share so that you may invite somebody to our live broadcast. Okay, now the plots are being sold. There are 142 of them being sold at 80,000 Kenya shillings each. So we're going to realize 11 three six zero thousand this is the amount now realized 11 million uh-huh what about now after realizing this profit now no these are the sales so we can talk about the profit now you see profit should be when we check the the sales then we subtract the amount that was paid for the plots for 180. We subtract for 180,000. Now we'll be able to get the profit. Mm -hmm. So we subtract for 180,000. This gives us 10 million 880,000 Kenya shillings. This is now what we are calling the profit realized. But now they are asking about the net profit. Net profit is the profit after all the expenses have been paid. Therefore, we will say that 20% uh, is going to be set aside for administrative costs, meaning that for 100,000. Mm -hmm. Confirm whether you can hear us clear. Confirm whether you are getting us very well from that side. Please confirm whether you can get us. Confirm whether we are together up to that point.
Mm -hmm. Roman 2 now. Find the difference. Find the difference in the amount of profit earned by Emmanuel and Kyoko. Let's get to Emmanuel and Kyoko and see their ratios. Emmanuel and Kyoko. Emmanuel and Kyoko. The difference between five and seven proportions. The difference between five and seven proportions. You can take seven minus five. We get a difference of two proportions. So two out of the total proportions of 60, 16 multiplied by the net profit that had been realized. 8704 thousands. So this now shall be the difference in the amounts received. The difference in the amounts received shall be one million and eighty eight thousand Kenya shillings. So that is the, um, the amount which was the difference. Otherwise, you can compute Emmanuel's amount. You also compute Kyoko's amount of money that was received. Then after that, now you can take the differences, but you can work it faster. Question on matrices. Form 3 work. X4 and... 4, 8, x minus 5.5, negative 1.5x, is a singular matrix, find x. What is a singular matrix? A singular matrix is a matrix without inverse. Or rather, it's a matrix whose determinant is zero. A matrix with a determinant of zero. So let's first find the product, even with their known x. We just express the determinant of the two matrices which have been displayed here. Remember to subscribe. Remember to also share with your friends that they may also take part in our very good lessons. I can see your comments. Feel free to tell us where you're coming from. Where are you watching us from? Are you getting us clear? Are you benefiting? Yes. Let's look at the product of these two matrices. Row times column. They are for one by four, we get four. Then zero by. Mm -hmm. Zero multiplied by X minus 5.5. .5. That becomes a zero. The next element should be the same, same row by the next column. One by eight becomes eight. Then zero by negative 1.5, that becomes a zero. Next, we will go to the, the column here and each column. The row X4 and each of the columns. So X by four, we get four X. X by four, we get four X. Look at that x by 4 we get 4x plus 4 by everything here 4 by everything in that bracket now like that so we get 4x plus 4x minus 5.5 by 4 giving us 22 so this is 8x minus 22. 8x minus 22. Then the next. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope you are able to see that. So 8 multiplies x minus, you see this is 1.5 by 4, right? Giving us 6, still x. So we get 2x at that point. So this will be 2x. 
you get to it's like that now this matrix now the product of the the, the matrix that you can see there is a singular matrix meaning that it has a determinant of zero so what is determinant when we take elements the product of elements in the leading diagonal that is the leading diagonal four into two x minus product of elements in this other diagonal now we're supposed to get zero so the value of the determinant is zero just because the matrix is singular look at that one just because the matrix is singular yeah so we can now open here say that we have 8x minus 16x minus when we take 22 by 8 you know it should become positive so positive 1 7 6 and remember this is supposed to be 64 sorry so 64x which is negative and positive 8x mm -hmm. then this is now equal to zero we can group some terms here and say 8 minus 64 equals to negative 56. The bad. In the next uh, eight minutes, 6.30, please. Same link. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're able to see that eh? when we divide here, we're going to get 3 and 1 over 7. 3 and 1 out of 7. Now we are told in part B that uh, Sophia drills a borehole and distributes water to her neighbor at a fee. The monthly charges consists of a fixed charge, that is X, and a variable charge. That is why for every 20 liters of water that are distributed to any given customer, the total charges for Sophia Police Station, mm -hmm. one of their clients, were 840 Kenya shillings in the month of July after using 2,400 liters. The following month, the total charges were 9,000 Kenya shillings after using 2,700 liters. Look at the first question. Form two equations in X and Y that represent the above information or the above situation. Let's look at the situation. We have the monthly cost, which is fixed. Uh-huh. 